Hello everyone. Welcome to Mathematics, Physics, Mathematical Physics channel. And, welcome to another episode of Physics Puzzle Series. Today we're going to solve Physics Puzzle number 4, which is an exciting problem about electrical circuits. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell, so you won't miss future episodes. Keep in mind that the aim of this channel is to represent the beauty of mathematics and physics, and the pure connection between them. So, watch other videos on our channel, and support us with your comments and suggestions. Let's see what today's problem is about. This problem is very similar to the physics Olympiad problems, or maybe a little harder. In this problem, we're asked to find the voltage of the 4 ohm resistor, shown by the red color V. In the given circuit. As you can see, we notice two dependent voltage sources and one independent voltage source. The rest are the resistors. So, we're dealing with a resistive circuit. If you remember, in physics puzzle number 3, we mentioned that there are two formal methods to analyze electrical circuits, the mesh analysis method, and the node analysis method. By the way, you can find the link for the previous physics puzzle, down in the description. The mesh analysis method is based on applying KVL in loops, and the node analysis method is based on applying KCL on nodes. However, we've emphasized that if the complete analysis of the circuit that is finding the voltages and currents of all branches in the circuit, is not the case, we normally are not very willing to use those formal methods. Instead, if a desired unknown voltage or current for a particular branch is to be found, we employ just the right required number of KCL and KVL on some preferred nodes and loops, and find the desired unknown variable. In some cases, we may also take advantage of symmetry to simplify the circuit. In the previous physics puzzle, we talked about two approaches that help us a lot in order to fastly solve a circuit problem. The first approach that we learned was, keep doing KCL until finding a nice KVL. Today, we're going to learn about the second approach which is, keep doing KVL until finding a nice KCL. Let's see how we can do this method. First, we apply some smart KVLs in some branches to find out the voltage difference between nodes. Second, we try to write the KVLs in term of the lowest number of possible unknown voltage. It'll be very efficient if we only keep one unknown variable. So, for more convenience, we set one of the nodes to the zero voltage, and we find the voltage of other nodes with respect to the zero voltage node. And, finally, after playing with KVL, once we found a nice node that the incoming and outgoing currents are in terms of the unknown variable, we apply KCL to find the unknown. Very good. We now, walk through the given circuit and find the unknown voltage with this approach. First of all, we can spot 5 nodes where we call them by letters A to E. Then, we must find the voltage differences between these nodes. It's easier to set one node as the grounded node which has zero voltage, and measure all the other voltages with respect to the ground node. Note that the smart choice of the ground makes our life much easier. So, how do we choose the ground node between these five nodes? Before getting into this question, I want to point out that if we move from node E through node A and to node D, we realize that the whole voltage is fixed. The voltage difference between nodes A and D is fixed by the dependent voltage source V, and the voltage difference between nodes A and D is fixed by the dependent voltage source 3V. So, it gives us the clue that we can disregard the 1 and 6 ohm resistors since they are parallelized to voltage sources. Now, getting back into choosing the ground node. As a general rule in circuit analysis, we always try to keep convenience by reducing the number of unknown variables. The best choice for the ground is node E. Why? Because once the voltage of node E is zero, the voltages of nodes A and D are known by the dependent voltage sources. The voltage difference of nodes A and B is known by the 1 volt independent voltage source. And, finally, the voltage of node C is the voltage of the 4 ohm resistor, which is characterized by V. So, the only unknown variable is the unknown voltage V. Note that there is nothing wrong with choosing other nodes as the ground node. We still can analyze the circuit, but it might not be as fast as we would like. For example, let's see what happens if we choose node B as the ground node. In this scenario, the voltage of node A is known by the 1 volt source. The voltage difference of A and E can be determined by the source V. But, it's harder to characterize the voltage of node C directly by the unknown variable V. If we want to do that, we have to first relate the voltage of node C to node A and then from node A to the ground node B. 
I suggest you guys analyze the other possible choices for the ground and see which one you think is the most convenient ground. Good. Now that we set the ground, we try to write the voltages of other nodes in terms of V. We see that by moving from the ground to node A, we feel the voltage increase by the V volt source. So, the voltage of node A is V. Then, moving from A toward node B, we see that we again add one more volt. So, the voltage of node B is V plus 1. Clearly, the voltage of node C is V, and the voltage of node D is negative 2V. Why is that? Because by moving from the ground to node A we increase the voltage by V volt, and then by moving from node A to node D, we decrease the voltage by 3V volt. Perfect. We see that all nodes have the voltage in terms of the only unknown variable V. Now, we have to make a smart decision to choose a node for writing KCL. Which one do you think we should choose? A smart choice is a choice that demands no extra work and adds no more unknowns. Obviously, we'd prefer not to choose nodes that are attached to the voltage sources or to the ground since we don't know how much current will go to those branches. Remember that according to the definition of the ideal voltage source and ideal ground, they can have any current. Having said that, the only node which is not attached to a voltage source or ground is node C, which is the bottom left node. So, let's apply KCL to the node. In order to write KCL, we need to set a current sign convention for the node. We should assign the positive sign to either the incoming or outgoing currents towards the node. It really doesn't matter which convention you choose, the important thing is being consistent with the sign choice. Here, we assign positive signs to the incoming currents. For the left branch, the initial point voltage is V plus 1 and the end voltage is V. So, by Ohm's law, the current toward the node would be V plus 1, minus V, divided by 3, which is 1 third. Likewise, the current through the 4 ohm resistor is 0 minus V, divided by 4. We repeat this for the current passing the 7 ohm resistor. We obtain, negative 2 V, minus V, divided by 7, which gives negative 3 V over 7. By KCL, this algebraic sum is 0. We multiply both sides by 84 which is the minimum common multiple or MCM of 3, 4, and 7, and simplify it by grouping the unknowns on one side and sending the known value to the other side of the equation. We get, 57V is equal to 28. Finally, we divide both sides by 57 to obtain, V is equal to 28 over 57 volts. Very good. The problem is solved. But the question is now, between the two methods we've learned. How to choose the most efficient method when we see a circuit like this or the circuit that we saw in the last puzzle. In other words, what is about these circuits that made us choose a particular method for each of them? This is an intriguing question. Well, if we look at the right circuit which we discussed in physics puzzle number 2, we see that we have some current sources that are attached to nodes. So, this helps us to write the currents running through different branches. Specifically, the value of the dependent voltage source is related to the unknown current. So this is another clue that pointed out the number of unknown currents might be minimized. That's why we choose the method, keep doing KCL until finding a nice KVL for this circuit. On the other hand, we see several voltage sources that are connected to different nodes on the left circuit. This already makes our life easier to identify the voltage differences of some nodes. Also, the desired unknown variable is a voltage connected between two nodes. So, all these clues pushed us to think that it's much easier to determine the voltage of the nodes in terms of the unknown variable rather than determining the currents running through the branches. That's why we choose the method, keep doing KVL until finding a nice KCL for this circuit. Last but not least, I have to mention that, this is not always the case. Sometimes, circuits are more complicated in the sense that, in part of a circuit, determining voltage differences is convenient and in some other part of the circuit, determining the currents of branches is more convenient. So, we should be quite flexible about using these methods, and when it demands, we can combine these two methods and apply both together, or apply each of them for a certain reason in a certain part of a circuit. By this, we conclude this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe. Keep in mind that the aim of this channel is to represent the beauty of mathematics and physics, and the pure connection between them.
So, watch other videos on our channel, and support us with your comments and suggestions. See you next time.